The waiver of custom duty and other tariffs on some categories of food items was introduced. The policy, which took off on July 15, will end on December 31. Its objective is to reduce the cost of food and hunger. Sure. The Nigeria Customs Service has estimated that the six-month tariff waiver would indirectly transfer about 188.4 billion naira to Nigerians as food subsidy being the value of the revenues to be waived. The implementation of the 0% duty rate and value-added tax exemption on selected basic food items is expected to contribute to the decline in inflation over the next months. Now we have have high prices of food items have fueled inflation and have made life unbearable for a large number of Nigerians. Food inflation, according to the National Bureau of Statistics, is more than 40 percent. The major enabler of the 34.19 percent headline inflation. Wow! The food importers taking advantage of the federal government's duty waiver must. They must sell not less than 75% of the items at the approved markets. They are also precluded from uh, exporting the items they import under the tariffs waiver regime, which is a short-term measure to boost food availability and affordability. And a review of the guidelines was released by the NCS. It indicates a mix of innovative finance that directly um, transfers value to the average customer by simultaneously rewarding commitments to national productivity and the development of agricultural value chain. Let, let's look at the, these guidelines that have been stated, some of these that I have already highlighted and how you see it. Mm. I want to commend the, uh, the Nigerian Customs Service for that particular uh, gesture. Of course, the federal government for granting that waiver is quite, quite commendable and it will help a lot. You know, 188.4 billion or thereabouts is a huge sum. And I believe it will drastically improve, uh, it will uh, significantly improve uh, our economy. It will improve our economy and then reduce the cost of, uh, the cost of food. Uh, but another issue there is the, the implementation too. The food importers how would they be monitored to ensure that the particular amount that has been earmarked for them to sell will be maintained? That's another issue. So the, area of super, the, the, the uh, issue of supervision is very key to ensuring that this particular waiver benefits the masses, the hungry Nigerians, and everybody in this country. Let it not be a situation whereby the federal government has done the needful, and then the food importers will now begin to look for ways to also uh, uh, make unnecessary profit to the detriment of Nigerians. Of course, we already know that that is, that is possible. <laughs> so if you're giving a law to prevent that, you need to implement it and put sure. measures on ground to make sure that it happens. Sure. So we cannot really say that people will not be greedy. It's, it's, it's normal for yeah, but, uh, let's us also to have those kind of people mm, amongst it's, us. It's, it's very normal, but... Considering what Nigerians are going through, if a patriotic Nigerian should find himself or herself in this kind of show, I don't think. Yeah, that's the issue. How many that. patriotic Nigerians that, that, do we that, really that's have? That's the point. So that's where, of course, I like. But that's someone who is also hungry. You said what? That is someone who is also hungry, who is looking for every okay. means to make more money. <laughs> that is it's going to be a major challenge. But let's believe, let's hope that um, the, the implementers will adhere to the guidelines they should adhere but it calls for proper supervision and follow-up, knowing the kind of characters we have in our country. You know, when uh, there's little inflation, even what you produce at your, uh, uh, back uh, at your backyard, you will also Inf uh, inflate the price, you know. So it's a common thing in Nigeria, but I think the, the, the federal government should seriously look into that because the idea behind this particular waiver is to cushion the effect of inflation the high cost of uh, foodstuffs in nigeria so if that is the idea and i believe is the idea so the federal government should do everything humanly possible six months is 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 a long way to go it's a long way to go so if seriously implemented believe me just like the president said i believe in the next three months the effect of this particular waiver 
will be felt by Nigerians. So um, another angle I, I want us to look at is, I, I went through the food items, some of the food items that have okay. this waiver, yeah. and I'm looking at brown rice, I'm looking at maize, I'm looking at beans, looking at wheat. Mm. Can you please explain to me <laughs> why we have to import these things that we have everywhere <laughs> here in Nigeria from the maize that is everywhere that they're roasting everywhere around us and then down to wheat, down to brown rice. I don't know, do we have brown rice in Nigeria? Uh, husk. Down to, um, Minutes. What, what's the other one I Minutes. meant? Beans. So, so good. Hello, you're an agro expert, please. Well, is uh, we are, we are used to it. We're used to importing we're, beans. We're, we're used to importation. The beans that we you export, know? we then import. Uh, can you explain that? Because if if we're exporting it, it means that we have so much That's to to meet our own needs, demands, That's and then we we meet the demands of other nations. That's so what please, why are we importing be. it? Why we are still importing some of these agro uh, agro produce is because our federal government government at all levels have failed in the area of agriculture they have refused to do what should be done you know god is not to be mocked god cannot be likened to a man god that has positioned nigeria in this part of the world did it for a reason and nigeria may not be stabilized until nigeria goes back to their original identity which is agriculture. Nigerian, Nigeria is an agrarian nation. If you look at the terrain, look at the geographical areas across the nation, you discover that God in his original plan positioned Nigeria to be a food producing nation. And until Nigeria goes back to that particular uh, identity, we may not be uh, stabilized. Agriculture has what it takes to solve insecurity problem in Nigeria. Believe me. So That's, why you're saying that agriculture can get the get us the finance that we need to fight insecurity? Is that what you mean? Both the finance and the engagement of most persons that are involved in crimes. Okay. Yeah. Now, the reason we are still importing is because our federal government has failed. The state government has failed. The local government has failed in their own level to develop agriculture. Nigeria is too big. What is going on in Nigeria agriculturally cannot service the nation. We are yet to produce what we can consume. And you see, those particular agro produce that are beneficiary of this particular waiver now, they are produce that are very much relevant in most agro processing, in most industries. Like you cannot talk about animal production, animal feed production without some of those agro-produce, like maize that you talked about. It's not only human beings that consume maize in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Animals consume maize more than human beings. Now, the maize we are producing is not even enough for you and I to consume. Now, animal is competing with you, with a human being. <laughs> How do you not think that Nigeria can survive without you know, developing the agriculture? So that is what has led us to importation. Why, why is our next resort importation? Why is our next resort? When, when there's a problem, you look for a solution, right? Sure, sure. Why is the first solution we thought about importation? Is, is poor orientation and misplacement of priority. That is it. Once there is no proper orientation, once there is misplacement of priority, you see things happening the way they shouldn't happen. If we're having issue bordering on food crisis, the immediate response should be how to boost production, sure. especially when the lands are available. Mm -hmm. And the people importation, are Exactly. Importation shouldn't be the primary concern. It shouldn't be our interest. Because once you're importing, I am not a pure economist, but the little I know about economics is as you are importing, you are advancing the economic status of another nation. And they will think of how to produce more. Produce more. To feed you. That is it. And them producing more means that they are going to engage more of their people. They are going to have more industries. 
they are going to have more processors, they are going to have more, you know, transporters. Hmm. All of those sectors will have to upgrade it. And you that is receiving from them, you keep going down. The little you can do, you find yourself not doing them because you're bringing some of those things from outside. So the, 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 the effect of importation, especially food, uh, importation of uh, foodstuffs, agro-based product into Nigeria is killing agricultural advancement in the nation. Because we know about the waivers. Yes, commendable. A lot of Nigerians have commended it. But let's look at what we are giving those waivers for, for importing maize. Beans. Mm. Yes, you have explained the myths that uh, not, not just um, humans get to consume it, we also have animals that get to consume it, and there are other things that we use it for, yeah. you know. But, but then, I, I'm still trying to understand the beans aspect of it. It, it, does, it. it still borders on development of agriculture. For instance, in most southern states, eastern states, you hardly can find where they produce beans, as in farmers that are into beans production. So it becomes a problem. We have limited number of farmers in that particular enterprise. Beans, yes, we grow beans. Beans can do well here. We can. But how many persons are there doing it? How many farmers are into that particular enterprise? What are you aware of concerning what the uh, agriculture, Ministry of Agriculture is doing about this? Hmm. Any, you want to, you want to take us into, into what? I'm, I'm actually taking us into the solution to the problem of Nigeria. Yeah. Uh, uh, you see, when you now begin to bring in those that are supposed to, to spare head, to, to champion this cause into play, I want to tell you that, to an extent, I am fed up. I am not inspired. I am not encouraged by the dormancy of some of these agencies of agriculture in Nigeria. Oh, so you believe they're dormant? Very, very dormant. Very dormant. Now, if, well, I, I, I don't know if they are principal. If they are principal, for instance, talking about the commissioners, the ministers, for a state commissioner, the principal is the governor, Michael, correct? Because he, uh, that's an appointed. I don't know if their principals are the ones chaining them. It's, it's giving us serious concern. Because you look at most of the state, you see this, here the state governors, you know, trying to make statements that is stating to us uh, agricultural, uh, that they are uh, they're advancing agriculture. They are ready to push agriculture to the next level. You hear that from the statement of most state government, once, or uh, governors, once they assume office. But when it comes to the practical implementation mm. of what has been said, which is supposed to be chaired by the commissioner or by the minister, responsible for that particular, uh, for, for the agro uh, uh, sector, you seem not to be hearing or seeing something that is commensurate with what the principal, the governor, or the president has, has said. So it's giving us serious concern. And that is why I, I, I find it difficult to, to, to totally condemn those appointed. I find it difficult to totally condemn them. It is something that has to do with the head. Because if I have appointed you to help me develop this particular ministry or sector, and you're not doing what is required, the next thing for me to do is to fire you. People are lamenting there is hunger. Have you heard that there, a particular state governor has, uh, has uh, sat commissioner or a, uh, the president has sat uh, the minister uh, 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 for, for agriculture? We have not heard. That means the people that has been appointed to man this ministry are doing the bidding of their principal. So that is why we'll always lament, we'll always mention either the governor, the local government chairman, or the, 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 the president. All right, that being said, at this point, we'll go on a very short break. And when we return, the conversation will definitely continue. Please stay with us on ATN Blowout.